Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be a project video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build this rope bag. We've had a lot of people ask if I would do a video on building a rope bag, and we finally had an opportunity to do one. We had somebody order one. So in, in this video, I'm going to show you the complete process. There is not a pattern pack for this because it's so big, and we haven't quite lined out how to do that. When we do, we'll let everybody know. And we'll have it available on the website, but it will have to be a printed pack that we'll actually physically mail out to you. Uh, versus all of our other patterns are instant downloads, so they're just a file that you print off on your own printer. This obviously is 21 inches across is how, how big the diameter of this bag is. It's far too big for you to print off. Uh, mine are two compartment. They're flat bottomed so that they stand well. I have done them round. You can de definitely do them completely round and that's ab absolutely fine. They'll, they'll work great. I just think they stand a little bit better on the ground if they're flat bottomed. Uh, most of the time, most guys will hang them on a fence or hang them off the saddle horn or something like that. But I think they, they uh, work a little better when they're flat. Um, we also added a front pocket onto this. This is not something that I do all the time, but you could definitely do that just to put baby powder or extra gloves or rubber bands, whatever you want to put in there. But that's the rope bag. So we're going to go through the entire process. It's a pretty good long video, so just hang in there, but it will have all the steps in there uh, going through the process. So let's get started. All right, so on this piece here, we're gonna go ahead and groove it for our stitches, and we're gonna go ahead and edge and slick and dye these edges and get them ready to go before we put the gussets on or anything. So the front and back panels will be completely finished and ready for assembly.
All right, so here I've got my front flap for the front pocket. And so I've already patterned that up and figured that out. We're gonna sky that edge right there along where we're gonna go ahead and sew that to the bag. And I'm gonna figure out a strap here and I wanna make that strap kind of like a T-strap. And the reason is because if you just sew across that little 5 8 inch strap um, sandwiched in there with the liner, it, it's got a lot more chance to break. And so I wanna go ahead and make that as wide as possible at the top where you won't see it. And that way it's got a lot more stitches holding it in place. We'll sky that down and kind of center that up and we'll glue that in when we glue that liner to the back of the flap. All right, so I've already added glue to the liner and the flap, but we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of glue here to this piece and let this dry, and then we'll go ahead and assemble this. And now our glue has had a chance to dry and get tacky, and so I'm going to go ahead and line that up. I put a little center center mark on the actual strap and the front flap, and so we're just going to go ahead and line that up and get it glued in place, and then we'll glue our liner to the back of this as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and groove this bag and we won't groove the end piece where we skived it down because that's going to be sewn to the front of the bag and so we're just going to groove here for our stitches right there around the front and the two sides and we'll go ahead and sew that on the machine. Now we can go ahead and cut all our excess off of the liner and we'll cut that excess off and then we'll go ahead and sand, edge and slick and dye everything on this front flap and get it ready to put on the bag. Okay, so now we're, while we're waiting on those edges to dry on that flap, we're going to go ahead and take our D-ring hangers that we've made. I, I cut out a little pattern here that will hold our D's on the front and the back of the bag, and that's where the straps will attach to. So we're going to go ahead and sky the tips of these down and get them folded and ready to be glued together with the D's in so that we can sew them on the front of the bag.
one trick whenever you're doing these any type of hangers like this or anything like that i always like to fold them and kind of compare them to each other make sure they're folded over at the same spot and that way they're all the same size and your d's are all the same length and height so now our edges are dry and so we're going to use this new applicator that we're trying out and go ahead and dye all the edges on the front flap And our D-ring hangers have had time to dry after we skived them and folded them. And so now we'll go ahead and glue all those together. You're just going to put some glue on there and then we'll mount the D's in and then hammer those down and make sure they're glued really well. And then we can attach them to the bag. Now here I'm just going to take my French edger and just kind of skive down where that piece folds behind there just so that it doesn't make any kind of bump or lump whenever we mount these to the bag. You can use a safety skiver if you'd like. So before we glue those D-ring hangers onto this bag, I want to take where they're going to go. I've got it marked out on the actual bag where they're going to go. I want to go ahead and scratch that up so that glue will stick really well before we glue them on. Now once these D-ring hangers are put in place, I'm going to go ahead and groove these. You don't have to groove it, but I just think it looks a little better if you groove on these, uh, kind of inset those stitches. So we'll go ahead and groove those and then sew those in place.
Now this bag is going to be heavy even when it's empty and so much less once you put ropes in it and everything and so I want to ensure that the main stress is not on just the stitches on these hangers because it can make a repair problem later so I want to go ahead and put a number nine copper rivet there just to uh, give it a little bit more strength and that way we hopefully don't have to come back and do any kind of repairs later. All right, so here we've got just a side of four to six ounce old tan chap leather in black, and I'm just gonna straight edge this so we can begin cutting our gusset pieces out of here. Now this first piece that I'm cutting off here is going to be for the front pocket. And so I'm cutting that. You can cut it any size you want. I think I cut this one three inches, but you can do three to four inches. It just depends on how big you want that front pocket. And now we'll go ahead and just take the pocket and I just kind of roll it down the gusset to give me an idea of about how long it needs to be. Oversized cut this. Don't ever cut it exact because I'm going to show you exactly how I get it just the way I want it here in just a second. Now we'll go ahead and groove this. It's already been edged, slicked, and dyed. We just did some basket stamping on there to match the back of the bag. And so we'll go ahead and groove that and get it ready for stitches. Now on the gusset piece, what I want to do first is on one end of it, is I'm going to skive that about three quarters of an inch in, and we're going to fold that. And that's going to give us about a three eighths inch fold over there where it folds over nice. We'll glue that in place and we'll sew and that'll give a nice bead on the top edge of the gusset instead of it just being hard cut. You could certainly hard cut it if you'd rather not go through this, this process here.
Now I'm going to put a couple marks on here in from the end. You just don't want to sew all the way to the edge because you will be sewing this um, around the gusset. So you just want to stop your stitches a little short. We'll go ahead and sew that right quick. Alright, so now we've got one end folded and sewn, so I'm going to go ahead and put a light coat of glue all the way down the edge as if, as if I was putting the gusset on the pocket, which we are. But we're mainly going to do this first just to mock it up and find out exactly where our next, or the other side top end needs to be folded. And so we'll glue this in place lightly, and that way we can get an idea of where the top needs to fold over on the other side. And so now with the gusset glued on, you can kind of see exactly where you need to fold. So we'll make a mark at the top of the actual pocket, and then we'll pull three quarters of an inch off of that and cut it. And then we'll go ahead and you just pull that right off. There's no reason to, to worry about it. Just pull it right loose, and then we'll make a mark, and then we'll come out three quarters of an inch further past that, skive it, fold it, and sew it again. And then we'll have a bead on both sides of the gusset. Again, if you don't want to go through this process, you can just cut it straight and glue it on. Now we're going to go ahead and glue our gusset on completely and so we'll put a good coat of glue here, another coat on the pocket and then we'll glue that gl gusset in place and go ahead and sew it. All right, now our gusset is sewn in place. We're gonna clip them stitches right quick. And then one easy way to trim this, it sh if you line it up correctly, it should be not a whole lot of overhang, but just take a heavy edger. I think I'm using a number four right there. And you can just edge the excess chap leather right off instead of using a razor blade and then trying to come back and edge that. Um, a lot of times using a razor blade, you're gonna get into your, your um, nice dyed edge and stuff. So I prefer using an edger to clean that up. Now here I've got some marks on where the flap is needs to be sewn onto the bag and so I'm just going ahead and scratching that surface there, scratch the surface on the back of the flap and then we'll glue that in place. And when we glue it we're going to go ahead and sew just like a real long rectangular box and that's going to sew that flap to the bag. 
and I'm just going to use some calipers on the back side so I know where where I need to be sewing so none of that glue shows and so that it's sewn correctly. So now with the flap sewn on, now we can mount the actual pocket. And so I've got marks on the pattern exactly where that needs to be. And you can make those marks by f using your pattern and, uh, for your pocket, just kind of drawing you a line around there. And I'll take some sandpaper and just kind of scratch that up so that gusset glues really well. We'll get it glued in place and then sewn on the machine. Now after you glue the pocket on, now's a good chance to kind of look at it and make sure that it's square and that it's centered and it's where you want it. And now I'm going to go ahead also and make my buckle strap, which will hold the actual buckle for the flap. And we're going to do a very similar T-strap uh, like we did for the, for the down strap. We'll go ahead and cut that out and then we'll just insert that into where the gusset meets the bag and then we'll sew across that. And I'm cutting it long so that I can shorten it up once I get everything sewn together.
And so as you can see there, I've got plenty of material for both the down strap and the buckle strap. So now I've got enough material to work with, I can go ahead and sew that gusset for the pocket. So we'll do that now. So now the pocket's sewn on, everything looks good. We've got plenty of material on our strap, so I'll go ahead and slip a buckle on there, and we'll just kind of look at it and figure out exactly how long the down strap and the buckle strap needs to be in order to make the bag, uh, the little pocket close well, and we'll mount all that on there. It's a little cumbersome with the bag being partially built already, but that's the best way I've found to do it. If you don't have patterns figured out, this will ensure that when the flap is closed, the little pocket's closed correctly. I had realized after I was uh, working on the bag that I had forgotten to dye the edges of the panels. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. It's not a big deal. You can do it whenever, but I usually do it whenever um, I go ahead and let the edges dry right after slicking them. Then I'll go ahead and dye them and that way they're done. But we'll go ahead and catch those right now. Now this is going to be a little bit different gusset than what I normally do. The reason is because my side was not long enough when I cut the strips out for the gusset width. They weren't long enough to go all the way around the bag. So normally I would just go all the way around one solid piece and overlap them in the middle on the bottom of the bag. 
but here I didn't have enough length so I had to improvise and so what we're going to do is make two bottom panels and you'll see how I do that. I am also while I'm there doing that I might as well reinforce the bottom panels so we're cutting some narrower pieces of gusset material that will actually be glued into the bottom section. You'll see how all that plays out. Like I said this is a little bit more complicated of a gusset I would recommend if you've got the length just do one solid gusset all the way around overlap them about three or four inches along the bottom sew them together and that'll take care of your gusset Now these are the reinforcement pieces, so we're going to skive all the way around those so that they don't create any kind of bump as we're sewing the gusset in place, and you'll see what we do with these here in a minute. But we're going to go ahead and skive those down to a feathered edge all the way around both pieces. Now these are the main pieces of the bottom parts of the gusset and so we're going to skive those about an inch in and we're going to do a special type of join, joint sewing here to connect the bottom pieces to the top piece of the gusset. Now I've made some marks on the main pieces of the bottom gusset and that's just to, so that I know that these reinforcement pieces will be centered from left to right and so we'll go ahead and put glue on these and glue these in place. We're basically laminating reinforcement to the bottom piece of the gusset. Now here I'm measuring in from the sides and getting a scribe line there to know where to stitch so that I can stitch those reinforcement pieces down. You don't really have to do that but I think it has a neat look when we're finished when you'll see it here in a minute. I think it looks really nice and it also ensures that that reinforcement piece inside the bag won't ever flip up or come out or anything else because there could be a lot of baby powder in this bag 
could be a lot of dirt and grime and stuff and that glue could break loose on that old tin and uh, they could separate and so we'll just sew two parallel lines one on each side down both pieces of this bottom gusset And so here is our top gusset piece. This is what will join the bottom pieces. And this will also have our zipper in there. And so I've centered up on the piece that I have. I've got more, more length than I need here. And so we just centered it up and we're cutting our zipper piece. I usually do that about 34 to 36 inch zipper. And I just use chap zippers. So if you buy the chap zippers however long you want. And those are the ones that I use inside my rope bags. And so we're just going to cut that slot in the middle of it for the zippers. Now these gussets, I did them, you can do them anywhere from 5 to 6 inches. It just kind of depends on how wide you want each compartment. Um, I would advise in not making them too terribly wide, especially on a double compartment, because the whole bag just kind of gets disjointed and floppy. And here we're just going to uh, use some double-sided tape that I get from Aaron at Maker's Leather Supply. And I really like using this tape. I use it a lot on wallet builds and especially putting in zippers. It's a lot easier than trying to put glue on that nylon webbing that those zippers are made out of. And this stuff works really well. And it's super tacky.
Now, I tried something on this bag that I've never done before, but I like the way it came out. It needs a little bit of uh, tweaking and just a little bit more adjustment. But I took a piece that was basically the width of the zipper tape uh, complete and then just cut it, stripped it out, and then just made a slit down the middle. And we're going to sew that on the inside. When we sew the zipper, it'll sew on the inside. So I glued that down. It worked out, but I need to I need to rethink that little process just a little bit more. But I like having that zipper tape sandwiched between two layers of leather, and I also think it made the opening of the bag a little bit more stable. So um, it's just something to think about. You don't necessarily have to do this step. I was just trying something new, and I think it worked out. I think it worked out pretty well. I just need to kind of play with it a little bit more. Okay, so we've got our bottom gusset pieces. I'm going to go ahead and mock one up and kind of like we did with the front pocket. I'm just going to put a light coat of glue on there. We're going to glue it in place on one of the panels. It doesn't matter which panel. I'm using the center panel here. And just glue it in place where it's centered. I've got a center mark on that piece. We'll center it up, glue it in place, and then we can do the same with the top piece of the gusset that has a zipper in there. And we can glue that in place, and that'll tell us where these two pieces need to meet on each side. And that way we can do our joint stitch there and um, make a complete gusset out of both of these pieces.
Now we've got our bottom piece glued in. We'll go ahead and glue the top piece in. You want to be sure you've got a center mark, uh, basically the center of that zipper, and then a center mark on your actual rope bag, and that way you can line everything up. And then we'll glue that from one, glue it one side, and then glue the other side, and then we'll make marks where those two pieces meet on each side. That'll tell us where to stitch. All right, now that we've got our marks, we can go ahead and just pull off the top uh, gusset piece, and then we'll be able to make all our marks. Go ahead and get that lined up on um, getting it prepared to sew.
and now we'll do the same thing like we did on the ends of the bottom gusset we'll go ahead and sky this in about an inch maybe three quarters of an inch and begin to do our sewing that we're going to do to join these two pieces together Now this is going to be more of an upholstery type joint stitch here and I don't know what they call it but when I do this I do not glue these two pieces together. I'm just going to hold them while they go through the machine and we're going to sew one line and then we'll, we'll get it on the bench and kind of shape the joint and then we'll sew one on each side. You'll see in just a second what we're going to do there. Um, but we'll just sew a single line and no glue involved or anything like that and now we'll kind of open that joint and just kind of hammer it down just a little bit just to make it nice and flat and then we'll basically sew on each side of that joint where those two come together we'll sew down and that'll sew down those fold overs and that's going to make a really nice joint it's very common in upholstery work if you look at the seats in your car and stuff like that there are a lot of times a lot of those joints that's how they're sewn So we've got the one side done, now we'll go ahead and do the other side the exact same way we did the first one. So now we've cut all our stitches and now we have one complete gusset that is the correct size for this rope bag. And so you can kind of see it's a lot more involved doing it this way, but I, I think it turned out really good. Now we did the exact same thing to the other gusset, so we've got both of them ready to go. And so what we're going to do is go ahead, I start with the middle section. And so I'll glue the gusset, glue the, the middle around the edge, the middle plate, the middle section, and then we'll glue that gusset in place and then we'll glue the other gusset on the other side of that middle section. So we're basically going to mount both gussets to the center panel, sew that up, and then we can mount the front and back panel. That's the easiest way I figured out how to do it. Now you want to start when you're gluing these you want to start by centering the bottom with your marks that you've made earlier and centering the top put both of those points where they're supposed to be and then you can work your way around down each side and that should ensure that the bag is centered and uh, that all the panels line up
and so here we're getting the gusset glued on to the other side of the center plate or center center panel and we'll get that glued together really good I would kind of hammer that down a little bit make sure you've got a good adhesion with your glue um, two coats is not a bad deal on that something like this because you don't want any of that gusset walking around when you're sewing this on the machine because you're dealing with three layers of leather there and you want to be sure and also and line up those those uh, joint stitches there where those pieces come together you want to be sure those line up across from each other Alright, so I've got both gussets in place. I'm just checking to make sure the zippers are lined up, everything looks square, everything looks straight, and we'll go ahead and sew that on the machine. Now I'm going to take a heavy common edger. This works best for, for this material. I'm going to go ahead and just edge off any excess on both sides all the way around. We'll come back and add some dye to this. This oil tan doesn't really slick up very nice, um, so you just kind of slick it up best you can. That's why I go ahead and edge dye and slick all of my panels first, just because at least that edge looks really good. And then we can kind of clean up and dye this oil tan after we're done with the bag. Alright, so now we're ready to glue on one of the panels. We're going to go ahead and do one of them. We're going to glue the gusset on the other side now and get us a little coat of glue on that and the panel and get it lined up. It's going to be important here that these, the center panel and the front or back panel, all three panels, line up and they're all square. Um, that way the bag sits nice and, nice and flat and you don't have one of them kind of cocked one way or the other.
going to do it the same way as we did the center panel, just going to line up our center mark in, on the bottom and our center mark on top and then work our way around. And that way hopefully they'll end up the exact same position as the center panel. Now we'll go ahead and start applying glue for our last panel and get it glued in place and sewn. Now this is a good chance here to make sure that the bag is going to be square and straight. Um, if you've got to pull it off and readjust it or turn it one direction or another, go ahead and do that now before you sew it. Just to make sure that that flat bottom sits flat on the bench on all three panels exactly the same. Now we're going to sew this last panel in place here a tip on this if you've got somebody else in the shop that can help you sometimes you might need a hand just holding the bag up 
um, because it gets really heavy at this point. And so if you're not strong enough to kind of hold it up by yourself, you may get somebody to help you. But be sure that they're not helping you to guide that bag as well. Like you do the driving, let them just hold it for you to stabilize it. Um, because you can really screw up a project that way if somebody's trying to help you kind of turn it or something. You just want their hands basically holding it and supporting the weight of the bag. And there's the finished bag as far as the bag itself. Now we just got to do straps, but everything sets straight. All three panels are touching the bench where they're supposed to be. Now I'm just going to go right now and add another coat of tan coat. And all over the bag, I've already added some more dye to the edges here. And that way the chap leather, it sometimes has a gray look where you cut it. So I just want to add some tan coat and shine that bag up while we work on the straps. And here's our straps. I didn't film doing all of that because it's just basically making a, a, a straight strap. I did these um, 48 inches is what the finished strap should be uh, from D to D. And these are going to have some buckles for adjustment and so that you can separate the straps and hang it through a fence if you need to. And so, but they're one inch wide. Since I've got two straps, I feel good about going with one inch width on those. And then we'll just rivet these in place on the bag on the D's that we mounted to it. Mounting these straps on the finished bag can be difficult sometimes, so having little scrap pieces of steel laying around or little anvils like that can really help you just kind of make things work out and stuff. So you got to kind of do what you got to do to get these rivets set on these, but um, having a few pieces of scrap steel like that can really help you.
All right, so that's our video on building a rope bag. As you can see, it's there's quite a bit involved. It's not really much different than building the round purse. If you've seen that video that we did on building a little crossbody round purse, it's pretty close. It's just much larger and with doing the center divider. Now, if you wanted to make this bag single compartment without this divider in there, you could definitely do that, make a narrower bag. I would probably at that point do my gusset somewhere around the six inch range versus uh, the width that we did for these two separate ones, just because I don't want the overall bag width to ever be over eight inches if I can help it. And I think on an eight inch wide gusset, single compartment bag, it just gets a little floppy and the two, com the two panels don't really stay in line together. So I'd much rather see around a six inch gusset, somewhere around there, six to seven inches. We just wanna narrow that thing up so that those two panels stay more in line and they don't have, the gusset's not so wide that the panels can shift. Um, but I've done a lot of these single compartment and they're great, but I just think the double compartment gives a little bit more stability Makes the bag a little more substantial stands up a little better and you can divide your ropes out A lot of guys like to you know keep the new ropes in one and the, the practice ropes in the other or something like that But that's building the bag. Don't be scared of it There's a lot of time the most time you're gonna have in these bags is gonna be in the tooling. So um, Depending on what you to do decide to do artwork wise as you can see once once it was tooled and dyed and everything It actually went together pretty quickly they're not real hard to put together, but the tooling can be a couple days, two or three days worth of just at the tooling bench tooling. So I have seen people, I haven't ever done one, but we, we might sure do one in the future just for the sales floor, uh, doing them rough out with a brand on them or something like that. They look really cool. So, but that's building a rope bag. I appreciate y'all. And if you want more videos or blog articles or resources for Leathercraft, be sure and visit dgsaddlery.com and we'll see y'all in the next video.